That's the position he's speaking from. And we have more moral theological clarity from someone in that position than the Reformed Evangelical Establishment. Somebody's forehead should be getting red at this point. So as you prepare yourself to go through this uh, clip from Tucker Carlson, I would just have a few framing observations for you. Uh, the first is that many establishment evangelicals are going to be tempted to sneer at him for the reasons that he specifies a couple of times in this clip. Uh, he'll, he'll tell you why uh, reformed evangelical types can get to sneer, sneer at him. He'll tell you why. But my observation is, given the position he's speaking from, it just astonishes me that someone in his position speaks with the kind of moral clarity that has been almost entirely missing from uh, the more theologically checked out quadrant of the church. Is there something really messed up about that? Uh, the second thing is at the end of Proverbs 8, this is the, this is the verse that you should use to frame and understand what Tucker is getting at here. At the end of Proverbs 8, wisdom is speaking, the personification of wisdom, lady wisdom is speaking. And she says that all who hate me, all who hate wisdom, love death. All who hate wisdom love death. So I'll just make a few comments here and there and uh, enjoy. If enjoys the word. It might be time to start to reassess the terms we use to, <laughs> to describe what we're watching. So when I started at Heritage, the presumption was, and this is a very Anglo-American assumption, that the debates we're having are kind of rational debates about the way to get to mutually agreed upon outcomes. Right? So like we all want the country to be more prosperous and free and people to be less oppressed or whatever. And so we're going to argue about tax rates. And I think higher tax gets, gets us there. I'm a Keynesian. And, you disagree, you're an Austrian or whatever. But the objective is the same. And so we write our papers and they write their papers and may the best papers win. I, I, I don't think that's what we're watching now at all. I don't think we're watching a debate over how to get to the best outcome. I think that's completely wrong. And I've come to this conclusion, not, and I should say at the outset I'm an Episcopalian, so don't take any theological advice from me because I don't have any. I grew up in the foul, shallowest faith tradition that's ever been invented. It's not even a Christian religion at this point. Um. That's the position he's speaking from. And we have more moral theological clarity from someone in that position than the Reformed Evangelical Establishment. Somebody's forehead should be getting red at this point. I say with shame. But I'm just saying this as an observer of what's going on. There is no way to assess, say, the transgenderist movement with that mindset. Policy papers don't account for it at all. If you have people who are saying, I have an idea, let's castrate the next generation. Let's sexually mutilate children. I'm sorry, that's not a political debate. What? It has nothing to do with politics. What's the outcome we're desiring here? An androgynous population? Is that really what we are? We arguing for that? I don't, I, I don't think anyone could like, defend that as a positive outcome. But the weight of the government and uh, you know, a lot of corporate interests are behind that. Well, what is that? Well, it's irrational. If you say, well, you know, I think ab abortion is always bad. Well, I think sometimes it's necessary. That's a debate I'm familiar with. But if you're telling me that abortion is a positive good, what are you saying? Well, you're arguing for child sacrifice. And what that says is that it is demonic. It is satanic. Remember, all who hate me, all who hate wisdom, love death. Satanic religion, demonic religion, is fundamentally suicidal religion. And what he's describing here is a civilization's suicide. And all our pundits online who are chattering about all the, that's chattering about all of this, writing learned articles for the Atlantic, that's the suicide note. Obviously. It's not about like, oh, a teen, you know, a teen girl gets pregnant and what do we do about that and victims of rape. I, you know, I get it. I, of course I understand that and I have compassion for everyone involved. But when the Treasury Secretary stands up and says, you know what you can do to help the economy get an abortion? Well, you, that's like an Aztec principle, actually. 
There's not a society in history that didn't practice human sacrifice. Not one. I checked. Even the Scandinavians, I'm ashamed to say. It wasn't just the Mesoamericans. It was everybody. So like, that's what that is. What's the point of child sacrifice? Well, there's no policy goal entwined with that. No, that's a theological phenomenon. And that's kind of the point I'm making. None of this makes sense in conventional political terms. When people or crowds of people, or the largest crowd of people at all, which is the federal government, the largest human organization in human history, decide that the goal is to destroy things, destruction for its own sake. Hey, let's tear it down. What you're watching is not a political movement, it's evil. So if you want to assess, and I'll put it in non, and I'll stop with this, I'll put it in non, I'll put it in non-political, uh, or non, rather non-specific theological terms, and just say, if you want to know what's evil and what's good, what are the characteristics of those? And by the way, you know, I, I think the Athenians would have agreed with this. This is not necessarily just a Christian notion. This is kind of a, I would say, widely agreed upon understanding of common grace, common sense, common grace. Good and evil. What are its products? What are these two conditions produce? Well, I mean, good is characterized by order, calmness, tranquility, peace, whatever you want to call it, lack of conflict, cleanliness. Cleanliness is next to godliness. It's true. It is. And evil is characterized by their opposites. Violence, hate, disorder, division, disorganization, and filth. So if you are all in on the things that produce the latter basket of outcomes, what you're really advocating for is evil. That's just true. Evil and self-destructive. Evil and suicidal. Evil and violent against the very idea of created personhood. Male and female created he them. I'm not calling for a religious war, far from it. I'm merely calling for an acknowledgement of what we're watching, which is not what, and I'm not, certainly not backing the Republican Party. I mean, ugh. I'm not making a partisan point at all. I'm, I'm just noting what's super obvious. Like those of us who are in our mid fifties are caught in the past in the way that we think about this. One side's like, no, no, you know, I've got this idea and we've got this idea, and let's have a debate about our ideas. They don't want a debate. Those ideas won't produce outcomes that any rational person would want under any circumstances. Those are manifestations of some larger force acting upon us. It's just so... Yeah, that larger force is a satanic oppression, a satanic assault. Principalities and powers are making their move. Well, obvious. It's completely obvious. And I think two things. One, we should say that and stop engaging in these totally fraudulent debates where we are using the terms that we used in 1991 when I started at Heritage as if maybe, you know, I could just win the debate if I marshaled more facts. I've tried that, doesn't work. And two, maybe we should all take just like 10 minutes a day to say a prayer about it. I'm serious, like why not? And I'm saying that to you, not as some kind of evangelist, I'm literally saying that to you as an Episcopalian. The Samaritans of our time. I'm coming to you from the most humble and lowly theological position you can. I'm literally an Episcopalian, okay? And even I have concluded, it might be worth taking just 10 minutes out of your busy schedule to say a prayer for the future, and I hope you will. And I would add, in that 10 minutes, say a prayer for Tucker Carlson. Um, he, a week after this, he was fired from his position. Uh, pray that he would land on his feet somewhere where he is not gagged. Um, there is, uh, speaking of suicide, I think... Um, <laughs> I think Fox News may have done something similar to what Bud Light did here. But, the, the, and, the, and this is not to say that we agree with everything Tucker Carlson uh, says or everything any of his guests say, but this is a genuine 
protest against the current regime, as opposed to the Mutt and Jeff show that frequently goes on on the other talking heads uh, uh, yell at each other network shows. He is addressing the root of the matter. So pray for him. Pray that he not be bound and gagged and pray that g- given the f- given the fact that he has um, spoken so clearly with the light that he has, even as an Episcopalian, that God would give him more light. And pray that the the reformed theologians of our day who have far more light would get it out from underneath the bushel. Out now, exclusively on Canon Plus, is Michael Foster's new documentary, Map to Manhood. I'm fond of saying that if the boys don't learn, the men won't know. Because we live in a time when the men have not been teaching the boys, the boys don't know, which means these boys, as future men, don't know. In healthier times, fathers would instruct their sons. But because so much of that has fallen apart, men today who want to learn and know these things have to be much more intentional about searching out the truth. Consider this documentary is the next step to take. Watch now at MyCanonPlus.com.